Hi everyone, Cinder from creativesynchronicity.com and I'm getting in another week of Crafty Hangouts, um, so be sure to also go over and check out craftyhangouts.com. This week uh, we're being sponsored by Ball Mason Jars and they wanted to see what kinds of great crafty ideas we had for using mason jars for crafting projects. And immediately I thought of this idea based on something that my mom and my grandmothers used to make. And what it was is that they would make these cool little sewing kits. They belong to um, a homemakers group, like a, a club in their local little town in Kentucky. And they usually, um, they would either use mason jars or they'd use coffee cans, depending on, you know, what the goal of the, like how big, whether they wanted it to be just a little kind of sewing kit to kind of keep beside you when you need to do a little bit of mending or something like that, or whether to make sort of a really substantial um, kit for a whole project. And this is the idea of it. It's got all these little pockets, as you can see. For putting different things in and a little pin cushion on top. Um, so like I said, you can make them in various different sizes. With the bigger ones, you can even make kind of the angled pockets for a, a large pair of scissors, you know, something along these lines that will fit in there. Um, or I'm just making a small one. Um, my daughter is getting married in, oh gosh, like five weeks now. And uh, so, of course, we've got wedding showers and that kind of stuff. And she's also then, in at the end of the summer, moving to the UK. So I didn't want to make a really big one. She doesn't do a lot of sewing. Um, you know, she doesn't have a sewing machine and all that. So she doesn't need kind of a big one. But I figured just a little one that will be perfect for you know, sewing a button back on or mending a little tear or something like that would be ideal. So I'm just making a small one and it really doesn't take a lot of supplies. I've got, you know, my ball mason jar here and then I'm using felt. You can certainly use fabric if you want to, um, but I'm using felt today. I'm also using glue. So I'm using Aileen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue just because A, I wanted it to be super quick and with a tacky glue it will hold really well. But you can also sew these. My, my mom, when my daughter was little, my mom taught a sewing class at the Parks and Rec department in our city and they actually used this as their very first sewing project. And instead of using glue, like for all the little pockets and to make the little sleeve that goes around the jar and everything. They actually sewed them and then um, they didn't use jars, they used cans and so they sewed two circles together and put a button on top and, and pulled the threads through to kind of, you know, tuft it a little bit and that was their first sewing project because it was very simple, straight stitching to make the pockets and to sew around that circle, gave work with some curves and things like that. And it was a great place for them then because they used a big, big old coffee can, they were able to put their projects in and bring that can each week and that kind of held all their supplies together in place for them. So there's lots of different ways you can approach this. Um, so like I said, I'm using felt this time. I'm using glue to make it quick and easy. I found that my little rotary cutter was the easiest thing to do in terms of cutting out all these little pieces for making the different pockets. Quick, easy, straight edge, you're done, right? And you're going to need some stuffing. This is just some basic fiber fill um, stuffing for making the um, little pin cushion that's on top. You're going to need your jar with a lid, ring, and the you also want the, um, the lid part, the flat lid part as well. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't take a lot of supplies and it doesn't take very long. Zip, zip, zip on a sewing machine or just a little bit of gluing, letting it sit and dry for a few minutes and you are good to go. I This one that I did with the glue and stuff, under 15 minutes including cutting out the pieces, okay? So I've already pre-cut some pieces here for you. And basically, all I did was, let me just uh, 
I'm just going to pull this little sleeve off one that I already made. Okay, so there's that so that I can show you that all I did was I just took, you know, a piece of felt and I just wrapped it around the jar to measure it. And I just kind of got my basic measurements. I mean, you can use the measuring tape too, but I got my basic measurements that way. And then from there, I used this piece as my guide for cutting out the pockets. And I decided that I wanted kind of one long pocket that went all the way across so that, you know, I could stuff down in things like, you know, it would be a good place to put maybe some threads and things like that. Um, Packets of needles fit great into these little pockets. As you saw, I had a seam ripper and a little pair of scissors. Um, in the jar, I, I would put sort of some spools of thread, bobbins, that kind of thing. Um, you know, a measuring tape, like those kind of little basics that you could fit into the different pockets. And then I could just some really small squares. And I mean, it's super simple. You can get the kids involved in this. This would make a great Mother's Day gift. Like I said, I'm using it for a wedding shower as part of my daughter's bridal shower gift. Um, hopefully she won't watch this before then and find out one of the things she's getting. But she's getting a bunch of stuff, so she won't know the rest, right? So it's just as simple as, you know, glue, glue. Well, you can't see what I'm doing. Let's try that again. Hold this up. Glue, glue, glue on three sides, right? sticking those on. That's why I said you can get the kids involved, right? Really, really little kids, if they're able to just put the glue just around those three edges, you know, maybe with a little guidance from you, they can help make this project for their mom or their grandma or somebody like that for um, Mother's Day. Um, if they're a little bit older and you're starting to teach sewing skills, you could even do hand stitching, you know, just needle and thread make some hand stitching. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Honestly, along with the mason jar, I feel like that adds a little bit of kind of a, that vintage look, right? That kind of nostalgic look, kind of big crooked stitches and all of that kind of stuff. So that's another thing you could do once they're ready to handle needle and thread. Want to get them onto a machine? Simple, simple again, because you just they're doing some straight stitching around those edges. You might want to do a bit bigger one. I'm going to work on a bigger jar instead of the small ball jar um, if they're just starting out learning how to sew because, you know, it's a little bit easier to sew on a bigger surface. The biggest thing you have to remember is obviously if you're doing it by sewing, you want to take your big long pocket and you want to sew like okay the smaller pocket to, to this one and then this one onto this one like you want to do it in the layers okay that's that's the only real thing that you have to be thinking about so I'm just gonna pop really quickly I'm gonna pop some glue on here actually you know what I'm not I changed my mind. You, it's it's just so simple. It, I mean, that would be. Uh, you don't need to see me gluing these. You you get the idea. Here's the one that I finished. Okay, and I just you know left an opening at the top of each one of these little rectangles to make sure that I could slip stuff down in it. And then all I did with this one was I wrapped it around the jar. Okay, can you see the seam right there? I wrapped it around the jar. I put a really good bead of glue down that length. And then I just, you know, for that one, for the, for the uh, pockets, I didn't even need to really hold them. I just kind of stuck them on and I let it dry. But for this one, because I wrapped it right around the jar to make sure that it was nice and snug on there, um, I actually held it in place for a bit and let it dry for a while before um, I let go. So quick, quick, easy. Then for the lid, let me just show you how I did that. Okay, so I've just I've just popped off the one that I already had there. Um, 
you, you can see it's kind of a circle, but I didn't start with a circle because I find it a little bit easier to um, cut it out after it's on. You can cut ahead of time if you want to, um, but I just found for me that this worked a little bit better. So what I did was I took the lid, okay, so here's my lid for my ball jar, and I put a bit of the fluff on it, and then I just grabbed a piece of felt, okay? And I just grabbed a piece of felt. I mean, this one is a bit of overkill, but, you know, I just wanted it to have some extra, just so that it's got give to be able to wrap around and take into account that fluff that you've got there. And then I just took the ring, and I kind of shoved this all up in the ring. So what I found easiest to start with, was to just make sure I'm bunching up that batting first. And then I kind of pushed that part down into the ring without the lid to start with. You might find a different method works better for you, but this is what worked the easiest for me. Okay? And then once I kind of shoved that down in there a bit, then I stuck the lid on and I just started pushing, okay, because you've got little bits of the, the um, batting sticking out, so I just kind of made sure that I was working them in under the lid, just kept doing that, under the lid, under the lid, and then finally I gave that a good pressing in. Okay, so there it is popping out of the top, all right, but you've got all this excess here. Now for me, the easiest thing that I found to do was to start with a big pair of scissors and I just I cut away okay I'm just I'm cutting away kind of the majority of the excess just to just to make it a little manageable alright so this is what it looks like on the inside now you've got a couple of possibilities that you can do and it depends on whether you want to make it permanent okay I didn't do this with the one I just showed you, the my, my sample one originally. And the main reason is because I wanted to be able to pop it back up and show you what I was doing here and not make it permanent at that point. If you want to make it permanent though, at this point, some good glue right down in the edge here is really important because right now you've got so much felt sticking there, especially with the felt as opposed to fabric. You've got so much there that it's not going to fit back on the jar. So you need to get rid of some of that excess. So what I like to do is I just grab, you know, a tiny little pair of scissors and then I go in and I get rid of even more of this before I do anything else. Just, you know, the less that you have to deal with, the better. So I just go around and I just clip what I can. Now, I know that I've made this before where I just kind of measured a circle and I, I didn't actually push it down in like this first. I like measured a circle of fabric, I glued on the batting to the lid, then I put the fabric over the top and then I glued it on the back of the lid. Um, but I just I find that sometimes it just wasn't um, it just wasn't a perfect I mean that's the way my mom did it but it just wasn't I could never get it quite perfect you know it would I would have it wouldn't fit quite right I'd have too much of the of the fabric left over or I, it it suddenly pull away and it wouldn't I don't know I don't know what it was happening and why I couldn't quite get it but this is the method that works for me okay so now. It's just a matter of the glue. Sorry about that. The glue was just like not wanting to come out. There we go. Okay. So I'm just, I don't know if you can see. There's the glue. Okay. So I've just started putting glue right around that edge. And then I'm going to start pressing this like that towards the glue. And that will start, you know, you, you want to clip away as much as you can, but what's left, you want to get it glued down really, really well. 
and that will give you the best finish on this because then once you've got all of it glued down like that little bit that I've done so far it will fit beautifully back on the jar so then you've got this little piece that slides boom just slides right on and off back onto your jar and then you'll have the lid and I'm just not going to stick it on yet I still need to finish gluing it the lid that goes on to make the pin cushion and it's as quick and easy as that so thanks very much for joining me make sure you check out the rest of the crafty hangouts this week and I will post a link to this on my blog with a couple close-up pictures so you can see um, in case you can quite see them perfectly over the video and I'll also post a link to the rest of the crafty hangouts so you can check out what everybody else is making out of their ball mason jars thanks so much to our sponsor ball and I will see you next time thanks everybody bye bye